Reborn Girl Since God has given me the opportunity to be reborn, I will definitely not repeat the tragedy of my past life. Let's see how I tear apart scumbags and scumbags. Wearing a Book Girl Since God brought me to this world, it is enough to show that I am the protagonist of this world. Let's see how I can reverse my life and find the way. Jun Luo Sweet melons, sweet melons, not sweet, no money. Wait. Why do things that belong to them always end up affecting her? She really just wants to cultivate a fairy quietly. PS.1, minors are prohibited from tipping. 2. Refuse writing guidance. 3. Abandoned documents do not need to be notified. I hope everyone can express their opinions in a peaceful way today, and then don't argue in the comment section. The world is beautiful. When you are angry, please silently recite. I am a fairy, and fairies will not be angry we have completed the article, the edge character she reborn, please rest assured to consume it. Keywords of the novel. Shin to retrograde no pop-ups, Shin to retrograde txt complete collection download, Shin to retrograde latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Mount Ryubo, Jun Luo. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Mount Ryubo, Jun Luo It is the late spring season, and the weather is gradually becoming hot. Only the early morning can capture a slight coolness. Although the grass and trees have not reached the level of lush branches and leaves, they have also faintly permeated with lush greenery. The mornings in the suburbs of Jingcheng are always exceptionally quiet, with occasional passers-by passing by in small groups, all with a hurried expression, clearly busy with their own trivial matters. At this moment, a carriage slowly ran over, leaving traces of the wheels running over it all the way. Occasionally, one can still hear the shouts of the coachman from the carriage. As the sound drifted deeper into the forest, it gradually drifted away. At the same time, two figures also followed the carriage's progress. Several figures rolled over and disappeared into the forest, leaving only red and black shadows, making passers-by feel a bit dazed, as if they were just hallucinations. However, such a sudden change was soon forgotten by them, and they pulled their thoughts back and immersed themselves in what they should have done the two figures moved extremely quickly and soon caught up with the carriage, but they hid their own figures among the towering trees and never let the other party notice. It wasn't until the carriage reached a deep enough area that the driver finally stopped the carriage. The coachman observed the surrounding environment and whispered to the people in the car, Here we are, this should be enough. As soon as she finished speaking, a girl dressed in a grey-green dress with a double bun jumped out of the car. The girl was holding a cloth bag in her hand, bulging but not very heavy. Have you observed it? No one came with you. The coachman shook his head and said, no, but the carriage won't pass further inside. It's better for us to walk another distance. The girl frowned and said, can't we do it here? After all, it can be considered an official road. It's a bit too I dot catching here, and if it takes longer, there may be other carriages passing by, which would be bad if discovered. The girl's face seemed somewhat reluctant, but she seemed to have many concerns about something. Okay, you lead the way. The two of them began to walk towards the forest, while the other two figures also rushed in with a swoosh. After walking for a while, the driver and the girl finally stopped. The girl didn't say much, and together with the coachman, she directly found some hay nearby and started burning it with a torch. The fire started almost immediately, and the girl threw the cloth bag directly into the flames, which quickly engulfed her completely the two of them saw that the fire was almost burning, and the coachman promptly raised his sleeve and sprinkled a large amount of white powder. The fire almost instantly subsided, and then it completely extinguished in less than three breaths. Then, the coachman and the girl left. And the two of them who had been secretly following the coachman and the girl jumped down from the tree. The first one to jump down was a red-clad girl who looked only about 14 or 15 years old. The girl had delicate facial features, her skin was as smooth as condensed fat, and her eyes were as bright as glass. At this moment, 
she was staring at the pile of ashes in front of her with her beautiful eyes, TSK, you said that the servants of the Hua family are always sneaky in their work. What did they burn? Another black figure also gracefully descended from the tree, a rugged-looking man with a deep silhouette and a pair of sharp sword eyebrows. When not smiling, he looked extremely cold, and at first glance, he knew he was a quiet person. As expected, the girl in red did not receive any valid information from the man in black, but perhaps she had already become accustomed to this man's style, and she did not have much hope. The girl in red kicked the ashes with her feet, and indeed there were still some things that had not been completely burned. She picked up two pieces of suspected paper from them with some disdain. What is this? There seems to be words on it. As she watched, she couldn't help but think wildly, you said this can't be evidence that the Hua family intends to rebel, can you? The black-clad man's usually expressionless face twitched a rare corner of his lips. Jun Luo, your curiosity is too strong, this is not our task. The girl in red waved her hand and said, didn't we meet someone related to the mission? Let's take a look, it can be considered as getting to know more. You are making excuses for your playfulness. TSK, don't you already know? But if you know, how can you still accompany me on this trip? The task is not too difficult, complete it quickly, and we can go back early to report, said the man in black with a hint of helplessness in his eyes, report and report, is that all you have left in your mind? Jun Luo shook the paper in his hand as he spoke. You don't want to know what Huamanshan really wants to do. Maybe their family has hidden some big secret. The man in black said coldly, No, I'm not interested in prying into other people's secrets. Moon Shadow, you're really boring. After speaking, Jun Luo lifted the shredded paper in his hand and stepped out first. The man in black, also known as Moon Shadow, stared at the piece of paper again after Jun Luo turned around due to the delay of Jun Luo, the two of them arrived in the city two hours later than expected. When they entered the city, the sky was already bright and the number of people in front of the city gate began to increase it is not difficult to see that most of the people entering and exiting the city gate were merchants and vendors, as they had not yet fully entered the city and had already heard shouts from all over the street. Pedestrians continue to flow, and the shouting of vendors keeps coming and going, making it look extremely lively. Although it's not the first time Jun Luo has come to such a city, every time he encounters such a grand occasion, he can't help but sigh, compared to the cities in our country, they are really much more lively. If we place our population base there, it is destined that there will not be many such lively cities, said Moon Shadow in a low voice neither of them had a loud voice, and coupled with their deliberate intention to lower their own, it was almost easy to be overshadowed by the noise from the neighbors. Little did they know that as they passed by a tea stall, their conversation was still clearly captured in one person's ear. When Jun Luo and Yue Ying arrived at Huamanshan, the scorching sun was already shining. However, despite this, the male and female masters of the Hua family personally came out to welcome the two of them. The male protagonist, due to his affluent life, was somewhat wealthy. Seeing Jun Luo and Yu Ying, he couldn't help but laugh and said, Master, are you finally here? Hurry up. Come into the mansion. The male protagonist Hua Mang doesn't seem to care about any etiquette, but Jun Luo and Yu Ying cannot ignore it. Liobua Mountain, Tianjin Sect, Jun Luo. Liobua Mountain, Tianjin Sect, Moonlight Shadow. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Tasks. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Tasks The male lead of this Hua Mansion is full of wealth, while the female lead is full of beauty. Jun Luo swept past the hostess without any trace and was surprised to find that she only had a double ten level of beauty. She couldn't help but glance at the male host again, it was already the age of knowing fate a typical old husband and young wife. The male protagonist is as enthusiastic as fire, and it can be seen that he truly welcomes the arrival of Jun Luo and Yue Ying, but the female protagonist is not entirely so. The hostess has actually been laughing all along, but the smile is not enough to catch her eye, and there is even a hint of inexplicable fear in her eyes. 
Yes, this beautiful hostess is wary of her and moon shadow. The problem that Jun Luo saw, the moon shadow naturally also saw it. The two of them exchanged a tacit glance, then quietly separated without any trace, as if everything was just an unintentional act. Jun Luo certainly doesn't want to think too much, but as the hostess, this attitude is really strange she instinctively felt that the matter to be dealt with this time might have a great relationship with the hostess. Of course, regardless of the attitude of the female protagonist, this male protagonist is still quite good. Instead of putting forward the conditions immediately, he enthusiastically brought them to the hall, made them excellent tea, and brought them dim sum that were not expensive at a glance just as Huamang was still busy with something, the moonlight suddenly stopped him. Mr. Hua, we have already felt your gratitude and don't need to trouble you anymore. Can we talk about the specific matters now? To be honest, we still have something important to attend to. We need to handle it here and report to the sect as soon as possible. Jun Luo didn't object either. The flattery of this Hui Yuan Wai was too strong, even she felt a wave of discomfort Hua Meng wiped away the fine sweat that had seeped out due to his busy schedule, then smiled bitterly and said, I'm really sorry. I wanted to treat the two Taoists well, but I didn't know it caused trouble for them. Jun Luo shook his head and gestured to him, indicating that he could speak directly if he had anything to say. The Hui Yuan Wai slowly fell silent, and his face became even more bitter. My son has become abnormal since he fell into the water three months ago. The son of Mr. Hua, whose name is Hua Liang, is the only unique seedling in the Hua family's generation. If we talk about this Hua Liang, he is also unlucky. He first had an accident three years ago, when he experienced a fire that almost killed him. Of course, he was definitely rescued later on, but even if he was rescued, he became useless and could not live without a wheelchair, unable to regain his sight for life. Later, due to this serious illness, Huo Liang's body was not doing well and he continued to take medication without interruption. Hui Yuanwei's hair almost turned white with worry, because even if his family had money, they couldn't afford the medicine that only immortals could use. So we can only use slower-acting drugs to slowly recuperate. After three years, although his body did not fully recover, his overall condition gradually stabilized. He did not stay in bed all the time and did not wake up in the middle of the night to cough up blood. Even he can control a wheelchair to come out of the courtyard and take a turn alone. I originally thought that Huo Liang would spend the rest of his life slowly in the darkness and there would be no more waves. Who would have thought that just three months ago, due to poor care from the servants, Huo Liang's wheelchair slipped directly into the lake. Three months ago, it was the tail of winter, and at that time, the temperature of the lake water could be imagined Huo Liang was already weak and did not lose his life due to the lake water, which can be called a great fortune. But something strange happened. Huo Liang Yen was about to die, but miraculously recovered on the fourth day, just like there is a strange force protecting my son in the dark, said Huo Yuan Wai with a clear look of surprise in his eyes. Jun Luo picked up the fruit from the fruit tray at hand and took a sharp bite, directly disrupting the current calm. But since then, strange things have been happening frequently in your mansion, Jun Luo said vaguely. The Taoist is so intelligent. Jun Luo's lips twitched and he said, there's no need. After all, the task we've received is that since three months ago, strange things have happened frequently in your mansion, and we'll investigate what's going on. Tell me, what strange things have happened at your mansion? The first thing is that a servant claimed to have seen a ghost in my son's courtyard at night. Speaking of which, I didn't believe the servant when he said this, but in the following days, some servants said they had seen it. Jun Luo glanced at Hui Yuan Wai and said, Have you confirmed it yourself? Hui Yuan Wai nodded and said, I'm just such a son. How can I tolerate these servants chewing their tongues everywhere? Then one day, I personally went to squat all night. At that time, I even thought that if I found these servants talking nonsense, I would sell them all. At this point, Hui Yuanwai's expression suddenly became frightened. Then, you know what? Taoist, I really saw a ghost. Later, 
I heard people say that the reason why there were ghosts in Huoliang's yard was because he attracted them when he fell into the water. My son didn't die because it was actually a water ghost attached to him. But in reality, Hui Yuanwei's lips slightly moved a few times, but he couldn't say the second half of the sentence, perhaps because he didn't want to face the fact he thought upon hearing this, Jun Luo surprisingly lost most of his ability to chew fruit. So, do you think your current son is a water ghost? Do you want me to get rid of him? I don't know if it's due to an illusion, but Hui Yuan Wai always felt that Lord Dao Chang seemed a bit unhappy. He opened his mouth as if he wanted to refute something, but he didn't say anything at all. Jun Luo rubbed his forehead and said, So, how do you really confirm that the one leaning on your son's body now is a water ghost? Is it just because his illness suddenly improved? Hui Yuan Wai shook his head and said, he used to enjoy doing things, but now he doesn't do them anymore. Moreover, he always whispers to himself, and even the door of the room doesn't leave much. Jun Luo raised his eyebrows without speaking, but glanced at the beautiful lady again. Well, since it's our task, let's go take a look first. Jun Luo said and turned around to leave, but when he reached the door, he suddenly turned around. Speaking of which, Mr. Hua is really lucky to marry such a beautiful and charming woman. After finishing speaking, the person disappeared, leaving only Mr. Hua and his beautiful wife looking at each other awkwardly. As for Jun Luo, who had already left the door, she shook her head thoughtfully. In fact, she was only skeptical at first, but after observing her earlier, she almost confirmed that this matter was likely related to that beautiful woman. After all, she was just an ordinary person. Even though she was good at concealing, Jun Luo still caught her unnatural. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Greed. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 4. Hu Liang. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Huo Liang Although Jun Luo had no father or mother, she was also pampered by her teacher and grew up. She always had something to say about things she couldn't stand. Although she would also beat around the bush and explain the art of language to others, she didn't want to face people like Hu Yuan Wai. Yue Ying probably noticed that Jun Luo was going too far, and gently pulled Jun Luo's sleeve, indicating that she could stop. They didn't hire you again, just complete the task, don't bring too many personal emotions. Hui Yuan Wai was said by Jun Luo to be very shameless, but he dared not argue with such a high dot level person. He even had to apologize and say, it was indeed my fault in the past, but I have to raise this big family. Some things are not something I can do recklessly. Jun Luo's smile on his lips became even more sarcastic, tisk, even if 90% of your current wealth is scattered, it will be enough to support you as a big family. Greed is greed, why do people always like to find excuses for themselves? The people at the foot of the mountain are as hypocritical as ever. Hui Yuan Wai was scolded by Jun Luo and couldn't speak, and Jun Luo happened to not want to talk to this person again. The moon shadow saw that Jun Luo had a tendency to go on strike, so she had to take the initiative and walk to the edge of the lotus pond. He half squatted down and swung the water in the lotus pond, then looked up and said to Hui Yuan Wai, to be honest, there is no ghostly presence here. That is to say, water ghosts and the like are basically baseless rumors. As soon as these words were spoken, not only Hui Yuan Wai, but also the maids and women who had once chewed their tongues around them all changed their faces. So the problem arises again, it's not a water ghost, but a ghost aura. So where does this ghost come from? With this in mind, Moonlight frowned slightly, ignoring the slightly awkward expression on Hui Yuanwei's face, and said directly to him, Can you please ask the young master to come out and see me? Yue Ying handed over the ladder, and Hui Yuanwei quickly spoke up, This is definitely possible. After Hui Yuanwei finished speaking, he gave a glance to the maid beside him. The maid understood and immediately went to Hu Liang's door, knocking on it. Not long after, the door creaked open from inside, followed by a blind young man rolling his seat wheels alone. At first glance, 
there seems to be no difference between blind young people and ordinary people. If we ignore those gray pupils, no one would think that this young man is actually invisible. Indeed, as soon as he appeared, he accurately cast his gray eyes on Jun Luo and Yueying. This action also made Jun Luo doubt whether this person was truly invisible. Jun Luo waved his hand to Huo Liang in place, but Huo Liang did not move. Instead, the moonlight stopped Jun Luo's restless hand and whispered in her ear, He really can't see. Jun Luo pursed his lips. It was not surprising that Moon Shadow could tell the true nature of the situation at a glance. It was indeed that Moon Shadow's cultivation was two orders higher than hers. Therefore, for some things that she could not judge with the naked eye, Moon Shadow could make accurate judgments. Huo Liang seemed to have heard whispers from others as well. He smiled lightly and said, It turned out that there were foreign visitors here, so I was impolite. He paused for a moment before turning his head slightly and looking at Hui Yuan Wai. Father, since there are guests coming, you should have notified me in advance. After all, it's really impolite for me to come to see them like this. It is not difficult to tell from Hua Liang's words that he has no resentment towards his father, nor does he have any intention of being distant or indifferent. It's just that Mr. Hua may not be a qualified father. Hua Yuan Wai felt a bit embarrassed, but he followed Hua Liang's words and said, As for my father, I will introduce you to these two Taoist priests. Speaking of which, Mr. Hua suddenly got stuck. How should I explain this later? Does he suspect that this son was possessed by a ghost to get rid of him? Words obviously cannot be said in this way, but the truth also seems to be impossible to say just as Hui Yuan Wai was still racking his brains to make up excuses, Hu Liang spoke up and everyone saw him sigh leisurely, Father, you heard the words of the servants and thought my courtyard was haunted. Hui Yuan Wai's eyes lit up slightly, and he immediately agreed, Yes, yes, because your courtyard is haunted, I invited these two Taoists. Hu Liang smiled helplessly and said, Father, what do you think about every day? How could it be haunted? If this courtyard were really haunted, I might have died a long time ago, but now that it has been a month, shouldn't I still live well? Hu Yuan Wai quietly glanced at Yue Ying and saw her shaking her head at him. He immediately realized that his son was not actually possessed by a ghost. For a moment, complex emotions such as sadness and shame filled my heart. After all, it was my son who had been spoiled for twenty years. After being wronged, how could I still be misunderstood by myself? How could I not feel heartbroken? So when he spoke again, Hui Yuan Wai's tone softened. I don't care, it's chaotic. Besides, what I found this time is not some chaotic martial arts Taoist, but a true Taoist from Mount Liobua. Upon hearing this, Huo Liang's complexion improved significantly and his expression became more respectful. Sorry, I am blind and unable to recognize you. Just now, I only thought that the two of you were the same kind of martial arts Taoists as before, which was a bit impolite. It's not surprising that Huo Liang ignored the Taoists so much. After all, the Taoist invited by Hui Yuan Wai before was a scammer who came to cheat money. Therefore, even if Huo Liang didn't show his face, he probably had some criticisms in his heart. He clenched his fists slightly in the direction of Jun Luo, which was considered a complete courtesy. However, it is obvious that Jun and Luo are not very concerned about these things. Yue Ying nodded and said, It's okay. We were originally using people's money to help people with disaster relief, so coming here can be considered as acting under the orders of our teacher. Huo Liang smiled and said, I'm afraid the two Taoist priests will have to go for a trip. Everything is fine here, and there are no ghosts at all. Jun Luo raised his eyebrows and looked at the handsome young man sitting in a wheelchair in front of him. Oh. Is there no ghost at all? But I clearly sense the scent of ghosts from you. As soon as these words were spoken, the servants around them all took a few steps back without any trace, and even Mr. Hook glanced at the moonlight with some suspicion. What does this mean? Can it be said that he misunderstood what Moon Shadow was trying to express just now? 
Jun Luo also noticed some strong reactions from the servants around him, so he added, of course, I didn't mean that you were possessed by ghosts, but rather that you had close contact with ghosts, which is why you have a unique scent of ghosts. Generally speaking, ordinary people would panic when they hear that they have been quietly entangled by ghosts, but Hu Liang's face remained unchanged from beginning to end. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Temporary Leave You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Temporary Leave Hu Liang is actually very good. Looking. If it weren't for the inconvenience in his legs and the inability to see through his eyes, he could have been considered one of the few elegant young masters in this secular world with his demeanor. However, fate has caused him many hardships. I'm afraid you're joking, Miss Taoist. I'm just an ordinary disabled person, and there's nothing worth being watched by ghosts. What's the use of ghosts pestering me? Hu Liang always maintained a calm attitude, looking more like the owner of this mansion than this Hu Yuan Wai. Of course, it cannot be ruled out that it is because he has been invisible for a long time that he has lost some sensitivity but Jun Luo never believed it was because of the latter. Huo Liang's indifference was something that an ordinary person could possess, almost unlike someone who had lived in a deep mansion for a long time. With this thought in mind, her gaze roughly swept over the few people present. Leaving aside a few servants with low eyebrows and pleasing eyes, Everyone in this mansion seems to have their own secrets. The young and beautiful lady, who seemed gentle and devoted to her son, but was actually the most profitable, has now added a young master with a ghostly aura. This young master emphasized twice that his courtyard had not been in contact with any ghosts, indicating that he would never admit this matter. Jun Luo and Yue Ying understand that even if they continue to inquire about this matter, they may not be able to come up with a result. So they decided the two of them exchanged a glance and made a bow to Mr. Hua, saying, It's already late today, so let's say goodbye for now. We'll come back to the mansion tomorrow to apologize. Hua Yuan Wai was taken aback and said, I'm afraid the two Taoists may not have a place to go when they first came to Jingcheng. Why don't they just stay at the mansion? I had anticipated this situation before, so I had already prepared everything for the two Taoists. Yue Ying clenched her fists at Hui Yuan Wai and said, My junior sister is playful. When she first came to Jingcheng, she always wanted to observe the customs of Jingcheng. So tonight, we will casually find an inn to stay at. Tomorrow, we will be staying at Laifu. When Moon Shadow spoke these words, Jun Luo was actually not idle, but silently observed the reactions of the people around him. The servant didn't have much expression and Huo Liang still maintained a calm demeanor. It was the beautiful lady who Jun Luo clearly noticed and breathed a sigh of relief sure enough, the secrets hidden in this mansion must have some connection with this person. Later, Yue Ying and Huo Yuan Wai had a brief conversation before they were sent to the gate. However, at this moment, a familiar face appeared in front of the gate, which was the coachman Jun Luo had seen upon his arrival. At this moment, the coachman was driving the carriage through the side door of the Hua mansion according to folklore, Jingcheng is one of the busiest cities in this country. It's not that the spiritual energy here is rich, but rather that the climate here is extremely suitable for ordinary people to live in. You should know that ordinary people do not have the ability to use spiritual energy to resist cold and heat as cultivators do. Therefore, compared to whether spiritual energy is strong or not, they are more concerned about their own livelihood issues. For example, water sources, commercial roads, and whether the surrounding land is suitable for planting. Therefore, there are numerous mortals in this city, at least far more than cultivators, making it a typical city where mortals reside. The people here do not trade spirit beads or spirit stones, but use the most common currency of silver and copper coins for trading. Of course, it's not that the cultivators can't buy anything when they come here, after all, there are still several exchange shops in this city, just to have a place for the cultivators who come down from the mountains to exchange silver. However, because Jun Luo and Yue Ying often come to mortal cities for missions, they have always had a certain amount of silver in their hands, so there is no need to deliberately go to exchange it again. 
At this time, a vendor selling tomatoes on sticks passed Jun Luo. Jun Luo threw a few coppers to the vendor, then picked off two tomatoes on sticks and handed one of them to Yueying. Moon Shadow shook her head and said, I won't eat. Who said it's for you to eat? I asked you to help me hold it, Jun Luo rolled his eyes indecently although the moon shadow was helpless, she took the tomatoes on sticks in Jun Luo's hand. It's better to eat less grains, otherwise when you eliminate the impurities in your body, it's your own pain. Jun Luo bit off the topmost red fruit with a disdainful bite, and said vaguely, pain is temporary, but joy can last for a long time. This wave is not a loss. Obviously, he did not take the words of the moonlight to heart. Besides, it's rare to come out once, don't you want to enjoy a mortal life? I'm not interested. Sometimes I just think, you're not suitable for cultivating immortality, you're suitable for directly ascending to become a god, Jun Luo exclaimed Yueying was too lazy to waste too much time talking to Jun Luo about eating and directly changed the topic. When do we take action tonight? Do you have any ideas? Jun Luo bit off the second red fruit again and said, Zishir Bai, at that time, Yin Qi will be the strongest, so I'm not afraid it won't appear. Yes, Jun Luo and Yueying chose not to stay overnight at Hua Mansion for the convenience of exploring Hua Mansion at night. After all, if they stay overnight in the Hua Mansion, those things may not dare to come out, and some people with tails may not easily reveal their tails. They decided to leave directly, letting those who wanted to hide their tails let go of their guard first, and maybe they could have the effect of killing two birds with one stone. Speaking of that locust tree, what did you find? Yueying thought for a moment and said, there's more than one scent of ghosts on it, but there's just an extra strong one. Jun Luo nodded and said, it seems that I feel right. Also, there's something strange under that locust tree, I don't know if you noticed it. Jun Luo was slightly stunned. At that time, all her thoughts were focused on the ghostly aura, and she didn't notice anything else. How to say it? There seems to be something buried under the locust tree, which contains a faint spiritual energy. If it weren't for my special attention, would have almost overlooked it. So, tonight we not only need to investigate the secrets of Hu Mansion, but also dig trees. During the day, I feel that even if we bring it up, they may not agree to let us dig trees, so I plan to keep it for the night to do together, said Moon Shadow, nodding that locust tree is a tree of wealth for Huiyuan Wai. Not to mention that Huiyuan Wai cannot agree, I'm afraid even Hu Liang will not agree. After all, the locust tree is a habitat for ghosts, and Hu Liang is clearly protecting that ghost. So there is a high probability that their proposal will be rejected. Yueying was not good at lobbying others, so he chose to swallow his own discovery at that time. A tomatoes on sticks soon died in Jun Luo's hand. She shook her single stick and chuckled, then we may be busy again at night. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Mu Zichu You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Mu Zichu In the blink of an eye, it was nightfall, but although the sky was completely dark, there was still some distance left before the ion time. Jun Luo and Yueying were not in a hurry to go to Hua Mansion, but started strolling around the street market. The daytime in Jingcheng is undoubtedly lively, but I never expected that at night, the number of pedestrians on the street would not decrease at all, even compared to the daytime. The streets and alleys gradually lit up with lights, placing the entire scenic city in a colorful and vibrant color. Especially in the streets and alleys of flowers and willows, besides the colorful lights and wine, there are also girls dressed in beautiful clothes standing in front of their own store, chatting, laughing, and feasting at the passers-by. A little uncontrollable, the girl hooked her soul and directly led her into the shop. Coincidentally, Jun Luo and Yueying also passed by this place. Jun Luo opened his beautiful eyes curiously and read the plaque of this shop, Spring Breeze Tower. Yueying's face darkened slightly as she grabbed Jun Luo and was about to take him away from here. This is not where you should come. Let's go to the nearby tea house and have a look. Maybe we can get some useful news there. 
So, what exactly is this place? Can it make you, a wooden person like you who has always remained unchanged, pale? Jun Luo couldn't help but become even more curious when he saw the moon shadow changing his face as she spoke, she also broke free from the confinement of the moon's shadow. He refused to let her go, but she insisted on going. Yue Ying grew up with Jun Luo from a young age and naturally knows this little ancestor very well. He rubbed his forehead with a helpless expression, this is not a good place. If you go, master will be able to break your legs when you turn around. Just as Jun Luo was about to break the clay pot and ask to the end, a light laugh suddenly rang out from beside him. Puff. I said this brother, your sister is really innocent and innocent. This is the first time I've seen anything in the world, right? I think it's better to generously tell her where this is instead of you covering up here. Maybe she'll just give up when she hears it, so there's no need to put in so much effort. Suddenly speaking was a young man dressed in a green shirt, who seemed to have been watching the excitement for a long time by his side upon hearing this, Jun Luo inquired about the visitor and immediately became alert. This person, like them, is not an ordinary person, but a cultivator. The man in the green shirt seemed to have sensed Jun Luo's alertness. He paused slightly and then smiled, I am Mu Zichu from the cloud spirit gate of Qingling Mountain. I don't know who the two Taoist friends are. The Cloud Spirit Sect of Qingling Mountain is an unattainable frontline sect for ordinary cultivators, and it is a completely different level of existence from their small broken sects however, out of courtesy, Jun Luo and Yue Ying also reported their own lineage. Mu Zichu smiled lightly and nodded, I turned out to be two Taoist friends of the Tianjin sect. Nice to meet you. Jun Luo raised his eyebrows and said, Look at your appearance, it seems like you know our Tianjin sect. As a non-mainstream sect, the Tianjin sect is rarely known. No, to be precise, it is rarely noticed by disciples of prestigious sections. After all, they have always been overlooked in previous conferences. Jun Luo was still young and only followed the elders of the sect to watch a lively event once. As for the more advanced conferences, they were all learned from the seniors or senior brothers and sisters in the sect. Therefore, it was only when Mu Zichu learned about the Tianjin sect that Jun Luo felt extremely curious. Can it be said that the disciples of these major sects are finally willing to take their eyes off their heads? The Ryubo Mountain Tianjin sect was also a frontline sect a thousand years ago, and I am aware of it. Yue Ying and Jun Luo's faces changed, and they didn't speak for a moment. There aren't many people who know about the Tianjin sect a thousand years ago, except for those old monsters who have lived for a thousand years. The past of the Tianjin sect has long been buried in the dust with the passage of time. Although Jun Luo lived for fourteen years and had little contact with disciples from other sects in the cultivation world, he was not unfamiliar with them either. But when it comes to hearing the words Ryubo Mountain Tianjin sect from his population, this is still the first time. Jun Luo's mind was lively, and in a few moments, he predicted that this person had an extraordinary identity. Even among the first-tier sects, the Cloud Spirit sect, he was probably able to speak. After all, as an ordinary disciple, there are not many who can know what happened a thousand years ago. It's fate to meet two people here now, why don't we continue here? Moonlight frowned as if to refuse, but Jun Luo spoke up one step earlier than him. Okay, let's continue here. After speaking, Jun Luo turned his head and showed a somewhat arrogant smile towards the moonlight. Immediately, with a step of his long legs, he was about to step into the spring breeze pavilion. Unexpectedly, before anyone could enter, they were stopped by a woman with a strange makeup on her face. The woman was slightly chubby and much older than the other women. She seemed to be one of the many beautiful women, but she didn't seem to at this moment, she looked at Jun Luo with a disdainful expression on her face, her tone soft but also containing a few needles. Miss, what do you mean? Our spring breeze pavilion does not entertain female guests. Jun Luo squinted his eyes slightly and said, Are you discriminating against my gender? The chubby woman was slightly stunned, and then realized that the girl in front of her was probably a bit inexperienced in the world. 
Miss, you don't know where my spring breeze pavilion is, do you? Jun Luo's lips curved lightly, and there was a hint of coldness in his eyes. Although I am not older than you, I have also ventured through the Dragon Pond and Tiger Cave many times. I don't believe it anymore. There is no place in this world that I cannot go to. The atmosphere was originally tense, but a few beautiful girls next to them suddenly burst into laughter. Even Mu Zichu, who was behind her, couldn't help but look amused. Only Yueying helplessly supported her forehead, seeming to want to leave this place immediately with Jun Luo and never come back. Although the madam also knew that Jun Luo was unintentional, she had no desire to explain to such ignorant girls. She raised her hand and suddenly four strong men walked out of the shop. Mu Zichu stood up at the right time and said, I'm sorry, my younger sister has just come down the mountain for the first time and doesn't understand this secular matter. I'm just bringing her here to experience it. Please help me understand. The madam only then saw Mu Zichu behind Jun Luo. I saw the face, which was originally covered in dark clouds, suddenly burst into laughter like a flower. It turned out to be Mu Gongzi's sister. Mu Gongzi, why didn't you mention it earlier? It's just that you added to this misunderstanding. As he spoke, he waved his handkerchief and swept it towards Mu Zichu's body. Jun Luo noticed that as soon as Mu Zichu appeared, not only did the madam's eyes brighten, but also the girls behind her all looked at Mu Zichu as if they had agreed. Jun Luo's mood slightly changed, and he immediately realized that the person in front of him was probably a regular customer of this store. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 The Different Status of Heaven and Earth You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 the different status of heaven and earth this black dragon came and went quickly, and in the blink of an eye, Jun Luo and Yuing followed Mu Zichu into this spring breeze pavilion. The madam arranged the three of them in a superior private room to express her apology. Yejian is located on the second floor, and when you open the window, you can see the bustling traffic outside. The madam saw that the three had already taken their seats and smiled, I don't know whose music master Mu wants to listen to this time. Mu Zichu shook his head and said, If my sister is here, let's just let it go for now. Upon hearing this, the madam's face couldn't help but change. She thought to herself, Mu Gongzi has always been the most generous in his actions, especially towards the girl who sang the song. Now that he doesn't even call the girl, wouldn't he want to lose a lot of money? The madam felt a bit unhappy in her heart, but she didn't dare to say much about such a distinguished person. She just gave a stiff smile and planned to leave the room wisely. Speaking of which, I also want to thank my mother for accommodating me and allowing my sister to enter this spring breeze pavilion. After speaking, a ingot fell in front of the madam, and her smile suddenly became more sincere. The madam waved her handkerchief and said, Young master and girl, you're having fun. As for me, I won't bother you with this old face. After speaking, the madam left with a joyful expression and a silver ingot on her face. The interior has returned to tranquility. Even Jun Luo didn't speak up. At this point, Jun Luo already knew what kind of place the Spring Breeze Pavilion was and what kind of existence these so dot called singers were, I am even more aware of what kind of chaos I caused when I was in front of the door. It's false to say it's not awkward at all, but at least I was born with a thick skin, otherwise I wouldn't have followed in so naturally. However, in Mu Zichu's view, Jun Luo is still just a 14-year-old girl, and some emotions cannot be well hidden. He smiled lightly and brought a cup of tea for Jun Luo and Yueying respectively. Actually, this is the first time I have seen a disciple of the Tianjin sect in the mortal world. Jun Luo picked up a piece of dim sum on the plate, bit it, and looked a little casual. That's because you disciples of the big gate seldom come here, so the probability of meeting it is also low. For most cultivators, there is an insurmountable gap between ordinary people and cultivators. Over time, there will be an inexplicable sense of superiority, and even a hint of superiority. Over time, many cultivators, after successfully building their foundations, are unwilling to go to cities with many mortals. 
this is both a waste of time and unnecessary. Since they have already embarked on the path of immortality, it is destined that there is a gap between them and ordinary people. With higher cultivation, they can live for hundreds or even thousands of years, but ordinary people will return to reincarnation after only a hundred years. Perhaps it is also because there are too many cultivators with such ideas that the communication between cultivators and mortals in this realm has become increasingly sparse. Since Hu Yuanwei knew about Tianjin sect, he must have known about Yunling sect, but why did he ultimately choose to seek help from Tianjin sect instead of Yunling sect? The reason for this is very simple, it's just that they have long ignored common things. Even if this mundane matter may involve the intervention of demons and ghosts of course, besides the fact that disciples from these major sects rarely come to the mortal realm, there is also a very important reason, which is that there are too few disciples from the Tianjin sect. A thousand years ago, the Tianjin sect was a legitimate sect, but it was only a thousand years ago. Today, the Tianjin sect only has less than a hundred members left. It can be said that the current Tianjin sect is not even considered a third-rate sect, it is just a small sect on the edge that cannot be further removed. Mu Zichu took a sip of his cup of tea and said, this is quite good. Nowadays, there are indeed very few cultivators willing to come to secular cities. However, I am probably a bit different from them. It's quite different, and it's the first time I've seen a cultivator so obsessed with women, Jun Luo nodded as he ate the pastry in his hand Mu Zichu couldn't help but laugh and cry, little friend, do you have any misunderstandings about me? I always feel like you have some objections to me. Jun Luo raised his eyelids and said, your excellency is too worried. I am not against you, I am against all of you. Hmm <laughs> hmm. Before Jun Luo could finish speaking, he was silenced by Moon Shadow with a forbidden speech technique. Sorry, I'm used to speaking without any restraint on weekdays. Please forgive me, Taoist friend. Immediately, Yue Ying glared at Jun Luo again and said, I can't even stop your mouth from eating. However, Mu Zichu was not angry, but shook his head as if feeling a little sigh. Your Taoist friend is innocent and pure, with a straightforward personality, which is rare. Mu Zichu paused before continuing, I think I probably understand your Taoist friend's feelings. This topic has not been continued. Because none of the three people present are fools, they all know what kind of history is hidden behind this topic. And Moon Shadow's ban on Jun Luo also did not want Jun Luo to be too involved in this past. Some hatred and resentment should have ended long ago, let alone be inherited by the new generation of disciples. Moonlight gave Jun Luo a few warning looks, and Jun Luo pursed his lips. After lifting the ban, he didn't say anything more. He just set his gaze outside the window, as if something was attracting her. Mu Zichu was born from a large family, and he was a human spirit who understood human relationships. He smiled and broke the awkward atmosphere first. Speaking of which, I don't know what the two of you are doing in Jingqing this time. If you need anything, you can come to this revival tower to find me anytime, he said Yueying nodded and said, we came here on orders from our master to handle affairs, and we will soon return to our sect. However, Thank you very much for your kindness, Taoist Mu. But. Is Taoist Mu staying here for a long time? Mu Zichu suddenly burst out laughing and said, What you're saying is quite tactful. If it were someone else, they might only say, I'm not a serious person, I sleep here every day as a woman. Yuing shook her head and said, Although Mu Dao Yu may seem cynical, in reality, you have a delicate heart and are not that greedy and lascivious person. Your statement is too self-deprecating. Mu Zichu picked up the tea cup on the table and drank it all in one gulp, as if a complex color flashed through his eyes. Even an outsider believed in his character, but she, to be honest, I don't live here for long every day, but there are people in this spring revival tower who help me with things. Generally, if you want to find me, just deliver a message here to the messenger, and I will receive the message. Next, it was almost always Mu Zichu and Yuing talking. The conversation between the two was not very profound, but after this conversation, 
they also gained a certain understanding of each other. It turns out that Mu Zichu indeed has a non-banded identity. He is a young disciple passed down by the head of the Yunling sect, and because of his extraordinary talent, he is also highly favored within the sect. You should know that the disciples of the head of the Yunling sect are not inferior to the disciples of the Tianjin sect. Although both are personally transmitted, their actual positions in the cultivation world are vastly different. End of this chapter Chapter 8 The Owner of the Pen You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 The Owner of the Pen 1 is a large commodity on the front line, and the other is a small sect that does not enter the market. It can be said that this gap was predetermined from the beginning. However, Jun Luo and Yueying clearly did not have the inferiority complex of being disciples of a small sect, and even after knowing Mu Zichu's true identity, there was no change. They won't flatter or flatter, let alone have emotions like envy and jealousy. After all, the talents of Moon Shadow and Jun Luo are not inferior. Even without the support of powerful sects, they always believe that they will have their own sky in the future. Rather than having such chaotic emotions, it's better to work hard and be more practical. Jun Luo was really bored. After eating dim sum, she became a bit lazy. She lay down in front of the window and looked at the passers.by on the street silently. Listening to the various voices below and looking at the various aspects of life, I suddenly felt that this was also quite good. At this moment, the conversation between two people downstairs caught Jun Luo's attention. Are you talking about the big fire at the Lu family three years ago? TSK, that was really tragic. Yeah, Lao Lu left behind such a pair of children, but they were both buried in that big fire. Oh, the Lu family, it can be considered a dead end. I've seen those children from his family before, they look so beautiful, it's a pity. It's really a pity. The two of them shook their heads and sighed, which caught the attention of many people. One of the middle-aged men seemed to have heard something strange and patted one of his brothers on the shoulder. Wait, you said all the children of the Lu family have died. That person is unknown, so, yeah, they're all dead. The middle-aged man heard these words as if he had seen a ghost and suddenly exclaimed, How could that be? I saw the daughter of the Lu family two years ago. Even that daughter got married. A commotion erupted next to him. Getting married. You're talking in your dreams. It's clearly burned to ashes. The middle-aged man was not convinced. Did you see her burn to ashes with your own eyes? The person asked in response, Did you see her get married with your own eyes? The middle-aged man said, Although I didn't see her get married, I saw her tie up a woman's bun. By the way, you all know that she married the Hua family. At this moment, another man suddenly joined the conversation and said, Ah, what you said seems to have left a slight impression on me. I remember a woman who sold herself to bury her brother three years ago. Later, it seems like she was taken back by Huiyuan. The chaotic conversation below continued, but Jun Luo couldn't listen to anything else. I only remember one thing, and now this Mrs. Hua has gained her current status by selling herself to bury her brother. However, Jun Luo still feels that there is something strange. Just before she could think carefully, a hand suddenly fell off her shoulder. Jun Luo instinctively turned back to block, grabbed the hand and was about to throw it over his shoulder. Unexpectedly, the owner of the hand was even more agile, directly breaking Jun Luo's move, following her momentum and making a half circle in mid-air, then landing steadily. You're daydreaming again, said Moon Shadow as she looked at Jun Luo with a helpless expression Jun Luo regained his senses, touched the tip of his nose, and looked behind him. All right, stop looking, the person has already left. But it's you, what are you thinking? Jun Luo whispered, when I was looking at the street just now, I heard a conversation. Then she shared what she had heard with Yueying. Moon Shadow's face did not change much. No wonder the wife of the Hua family is so young, she sighed softly by this calculation, 
Madame Hua has been married to the Hua family for three years, but to this day she has nothing to do. She is even about the same age as Hua Liang. This combination really feels strange and powerful. In the blink of an eye, time arrived at Zixi, and Yue Ying and Jun Luo transformed into two remnants and arrived near Huafu. They found that the Hua mansion at this time was significantly different from the Hua mansion in the daytime. The two of them exchanged a silent glance in private, knowing that they had taken the right step. If it weren't for them choosing to leave the mansion at night, they probably wouldn't have been able to bring out this thing. The two of them could clearly feel that the yin energy of the Hua mansion was gradually increasing, and there was also some ghost energy mixed in with this yin energy that was detected in the daytime. Let's go. With Jun Luo's instructions, the two of them almost simultaneously left the branch they were standing on and infiltrated into the Hua mansion. Jun Luo was afraid of making too much noise, so he didn't speak. Instead, he pointed in the direction of the locust tree, indicating that he would first go and take a look under it. Yue Ying did not refuse, because their initial plan was to first explore what was beneath the locust tree. The two quickly arrived under the locust tree. Jun Luo whispered, strange. The ghostly aura on this locust tree is noticeably stronger than in the daytime, indicating that the ghost may have inhabited the locust tree before, so it left later. Yue Ying glanced at Jun Luo and said, don't worry about anything else for now, dig out the things first. Jun Luo lifted her palm lightly, and a hint of fluorescent green suddenly appeared in her palm. The next second, the green fluorescence flickered slightly, transforming into a soft green vine. The vine seemed to have come to life under the control of Jun Luo, and its tail turned into an incredibly sharp tip, piercing straight into the soil. As the vines delved deeper, the green fluorescence of the Jun Luo palm became increasingly apparent. She couldn't help but furrow her eyebrows slightly, as if she didn't expect this thing to be buried so deeply. Fortunately, not long after, the vine still touched the object. It rolled around the object one by one, and then began to drag it out step by step in the direction of its arrival. Not long after, the vine took the object out of the soil and presented it to Jun Luo. This is a pen, full of jade, emitting a faint spiritual energy, with the tip of the pen having the strongest spiritual energy, making it a top-dot-notch treasure at first glance. Jun Luo's eyes lit up slightly. It's really a good thing. Judging by its level, this pen should have reached the level of a spiritual weapon, but it's better than the one in Second Senior Sister's hand. Why don't you take it back and use it directly for Second Senior Sister? You know how to arrange it, but when you bring the pen to second senior sister, won't you be afraid of the jealousy of first senior brother and third senior brother?" said Moon Shadow with a light flick on her lips Jun Luo smiled casually and said, this is a matter of chance. Isn't it that they haven't encountered a magic weapon they can use? However, before we put it away, we should still ask the original owner of this item. Jun Luo said curiously, I didn't feel any divine imprint connecting anyone on this pen. It should be an unowned object, right? Not all things with a master will be marked with divine sense marks, after all, ordinary people do not have the ability to mark magic treasures. Madam Hua, are you right about what I said? End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Night Investigation You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 9 Night Investigation At that time, there was no glimmer of light in the scenic city, and even the lanterns in front of every household were completely extinguished. The dark clouds above the city seemed to be about to greet a storm, and the silence at this time is just the last piece before the rainstorm. Without anyone, the once bustling streets became empty alleys, as if everything they had experienced before was just a bustling scene preserved in their dreams. With the sound of the moonlight falling, Mrs. Hua's figure gradually emerged from the darkness. Jun Luo's vigilance suddenly increased to twelve points. She looked at the woman in front of her with determination, as if she wanted to find traces from her that did not belong to humans. But the result was undoubtedly disappointing for her, because no matter how she looked at it, the person in front of her seemed to be just an ordinary person. Even if the ghost energy on her body was stronger than in the daytime, 
it was not the ghost energy escaping from her body. So, without a doubt, this woman is definitely not a ghost. However, it was not without reason that she was able to appear here in the middle of the night. I never thought I could see the two Taoist priests here and now. Of course, what surprised me the most was that they would come back here in the middle of the night. She couldn't help but glance at the brush in Junluo's hand. Now it seems that the two Taoist priests are already prepared. Jun Luo hesitated and said, You came here in the middle of the night to pick up this pen too. Madame Hua is completely different from being as honest as during the day, and even has a hint of seduction. Her lips lightly curl up with a hint of deep meaning, but there is no sign of being caught in a state of panic. Not bad, the people who came before were all scammers from rivers and lakes, and there was no real talent, so I couldn't detect the existence of this pen. But you are different, so naturally I came to take this pen. Jun Luo saw that Madame Hua had admitted that this was her property, and suddenly spoke up as if thinking of something, so that coachman and that maid are also your people. Madame Hua's face showed a slight surprise. How could you think of this layer? It seems that you have seen what they did during the day. But I'm curious, how did you guess about me? Although the ink on those fragments of paper is dry and the spiritual energy has long been exhausted, it can still be seen that the incomplete fragments are marked with talisman patterns. It is impossible for these talisman patterns to take effect solely with a regular brush, so it can only be the pen in front of you, and its owner is you. It is not difficult to guess that those two people definitely have a certain relationship with you. Furthermore, during the day, I saw the coachman again, who had a faint scent on his body. Unfortunately, Madam also had the same scent on her body. I think at that time, he had just met Madam not long ago. Madam Hua seemed a bit regretful, as if she was talking to Jun Luo or muttering to herself, indeed, it's not reliable enough to find ordinary people to handle things. Jun Luo smiled and said, Ordinary people. Aren't you also an ordinary person yourself? In fact, this was also what Moon Shadow wanted to say at this moment. His handsome face sank slightly and he said coldly, You don't have any spiritual power on you, so it's impossible to use this pen. But the ink on those papers does indeed come from this pen. So, there are actually other cultivators behind your back helping you. Who is it? The moonlight's gaze suddenly became sharp, and even the surrounding air pressure decreased significantly. If it were an ordinary person, they might have become anxious and uneasy due to the momentum of the moon's shadow, but Mrs. Hua seemed unable to feel it and said calmly, Now I am just a woman without any relatives to support me from behind. Who can help me? Judging from this, it's probably a refusal to admit it. Jun Luo smiled and said, There's so much I can help you with, for example, the Taoist who watches Feng Shui at the temple. Madame Hua lowered her head slightly and hid her expression in the darkness, but her voice was as plain as ever, I don't know what you're talking about. She seemed to want to hide herself, but how could Jun Luo make her wish come true? Oh. You really don't know what I'm talking about, Miss Lu. Mrs. Hua's eyelashes trembled slightly, it seems that both of you have come prepared, even knowing my name. Jun Luo lightly tapped the ground with one foot, and his body immediately left the ground. In the next moment, his figure flashed and appeared directly on a nearby tree branch. She looked down at Mrs. Hua with a smile on her face, which could give a strong sense of oppression visually. Miss Lu, I'm actually quite curious about your story. What exactly is the reason why you want to kill Hu Liang? And what is the purpose of the person behind you who helped you so generously respond to a mortal's demands? As he spoke, Jun Luo turned his long pen and said, Speaking of which, you may not even know how precious this pen is. I have to say, burying it in this dark underground is really a waste this is a flying spirit pen, a lower grade spiritual tool. Of course, its level may not be high for some disciples of major sects, but for disciples of small sects, it is also an unattainable good thing. That person's ability to hand over this to you so easily is probably quite generous. So, which major sect disciple is helping you so much? 
After some analysis, Jun Luo pointed out the key points in a few words, while Mrs. Hua silently stirred the silk handkerchief in her hand in the darkness. I have to say, this little Taoist is really clever, but I really can't understand what you're saying. If you two have nothing else to do, please return that sum to me. I do want Hu Liang's life, so I created some supernatural events, but it has nothing to do with others Jun Luo raised his eyebrows, not expecting that this person would rather admit that he wanted to kill than reveal any information about the person behind him. This couldn't help but make Jun Luo even more curious about what the person behind this was, which could make Miss Lu so afraid. Moreover, this is a matter of my family's residence, and I hope the two Taoist priests won't interfere anymore. Mrs. Hua's words are a disguised admission that all the supernatural events in this house are actually related to her. But Jun Luo just finds something strange. Even if it's the ghosts you recruited, and you haven't been devoured by them, I assume these ghosts are also under your control now, so what about those ghosts? Yue Ying remained silent, but as Jun Luo and Mrs. Hua talked, her eyebrows became even tighter. The scent of many ghosts on the locust tree is not fake, but Mrs. Hua's body always only has the scent of one ghost. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Controversy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Controversy This aura is very similar to the strongest aura on the locust tree. Madame Hua did not give Jun Luo an answer, but simply looked up at the figures on the tree with a faint expression. As you said, I am just an ordinary person. Although I can summon ghosts, how can I control them? Madame Hua, if you continue practicing Tai Chi like this, it will be meaningless, Jun Luo's eyes flickered with a hint of impatience Madame Hua's lips curled slightly, as if intentionally provoking Jun Luo, and she chuckled lightly, what you're asking is all about me, in other words, it's also my personal matter. It doesn't seem to have much to do with you. As for whether to answer or not, how to answer is also my own question. Do I have to answer if you ask? There is no such reason. Master Jun, you are a bit too domineering. Jun Luo was angry and laughed, if it's just about your own private matter, I wouldn't pay attention to it, but what about Hu Liang? Can it also be considered your private matter? Madame Hua smiled as if taking a stroll and thought to herself, of course she is. She is my stepson, and in terms of identity, my stepmother is also his mother. Since I am his mother, is there any problem with controlling his life? Misconception Even a biological mother doesn't say she can completely control her own child. She is an independent person, or an independent person with no blood relationship with you. How can you control her life and death? Besides, we still invited Mr. Hua to solve this matter. Do you think Mr. Huo would still like you if he knew your true face? Madam Hua's smile grew stronger. Although you are intelligent, Taoist Master Jun is also innocent and lovely. Since I dare to do these things, I have absolute confidence that Hua Meng cannot see them. Jun Luo's face darkened slightly. Miss Lu, paper cannot keep fire. Everything you try to hide will eventually be revealed to the world, and you may not even have a place to live or settle down. Do you think you have arranged everything perfectly, but in reality, it was discovered by Mr. Hua that a loophole occurred and he invited us here. Moreover, do you really think that after the incident, the people behind you will take care of you? Since that person can do this, it indicates that he had a purpose from the beginning, and once he achieves his ultimate goal, you become a useless abandoned child. The final outcome will never be so good Jun Luo made the consequences very serious, but unfortunately her fierce and malicious behavior did not scare Madame Hua. Master Jun is really good at bewitching people. If there really was such a person, maybe I would have started to be afraid now. Unfortunately, I was the only one from beginning to end. The pen is mine, and those spells were also drawn by me. The moon shadow next to her felt even more strange as she looked at it. On the surface, it seemed that Miss Lu was just a malicious stepmother who wanted to get rid of her stepson, but he always felt that the truth was not so. As Moon Shadow thought so, she immediately reminded Jun Luo. 
Jun Luo's anger gradually dissipated in his heart, and he also sensed something unreasonable. Generally, stepmothers want to harm their stepsons because they are too excellent and afraid of blocking their own children's path. However, even if Mrs. Hua has children, Huo Liang may not be a hindrance to them. Huo Liang has inconvenient legs and feet, and her eyes are blind. No matter how she looks at it, it doesn't seem like a threat to her future child. At first glance, things seem to be moving in a strange direction. So, Madame Hua is indeed making every effort to create a malicious stepmother image for herself. Just. Why? What is the point of telling such lies? Jun Luo's brain began to run rapidly, and generally speaking, a lie is often used to cover up the truth. So, what is the truth about this matter? She seems to have been inadvertently led astray with such thoughts, Jun Luo's gaze towards the woman also became increasingly unfriendly. Madam Hua, since you insist on not handing over the ghost, then we can only offend you. Of course, we won't really hurt you. Just wait for the ghost to appear, and I will immediately release you. Just waiting for Jun Luo to take action, the door of the nearby room was suddenly pushed open, and at the same time, the two lanterns in front of the door suddenly lit up. The sound of the wheels rolling over the ground slowly echoed in the silence. Jun Luo heard the person sitting in the wheelchair speak softly, that's enough. Huo Liang, who should have been asleep already, slowly drove his wheelchair to the position where the two sides were facing each other. However, none of the three people present showed any signs of surprise, indicating that they had already anticipated that this person would eventually appear. However, Jun Luo looked at Huo Liang's expression with a hint of depth. Master Hua, you actually know that Madame Hua wants to kill you, right? Huo Liang did not deny it, but nodded slightly. So, are you now trying to maintain someone who plans to kill you? said Jun Luo with a stronger and more intense aura in his eyes. Huo Liang said in a low voice, Two Taoists, I remember I made it clear during the day that I didn't want you to interfere in my family affairs anymore. In other words, even if you die, you deserve it. Jun Luo's words were not bad, but Huo Liang still maintained his cold and indifferent appearance, not being provoked at all. He only remained silent for a while before speaking. She won't kill me now, she paused and added, my courtyard won't be haunted anymore. Upon hearing this, Jun Luo did not flinch, but instead circled around Huo Liang as if he had figured something out again. Madame Hua is protecting that ghost, and you are also protecting that ghost. So, it should have a certain bond with both of you, or was it someone you knew during your lifetime? Huo Liang calmly grasped the armrest of the wheelchair, while Mrs. Hua shook violently, so much so that it was difficult for Jun Luo not to notice Jun Luo concealed the emotions in her eyes, it seems that she guessed correctly about this. Does it mean that the people we know have nothing to do with your excellency? Jun Luo suddenly smiled and said, you're not right. My senior brother and I were invited by Hu Yuanwei, not you. It was also Hu Yuanwei, not you, who rewarded us. So here, what you say doesn't count, including what Mrs. Hua said. Taking people's money to alleviate disasters is not something we can do. We must also understand the beginning and end of things and give an explanation to Mr. Hua, right? At this point, Jun Luodun paused and then continued, Besides, if ghosts appear in this city, it's not just your family business. You know, ghosts are the most unpredictable thing, how can they suddenly erupt and harm people? End of this chapter